one by one by one, the Yewusu walls fell on the stomach, thriving in pain. What was going on? Come, my dear brother, let's go on an adventure. Don't be a scare, well, the world is for brave. Follow your fears. On a safari quest today, we go back to a previous episode where we got to meet the very first black news who called Wangaza Kweli. Wangaza Kweli had just met the three oracles and he'd been given his divine destiny and future in the Zambezi Mara. And his life was moving on pretty well until one day he saw a rabbit. And that rabbit was standing on its hind paw. But the rabbit was right underneath the Mujosi tree. What would Wangaza Kweli do? Would he eat the rabbit? Well, in the land of Zambezi Mara, we have an unspoken rule that if an animal that is able to speak, talk, and walk upright sees another animal doing the same, then it cannot eat that animal. And so Mongaza Kweli knew this rabbit is not food. And so he approached him. And that rabbit is Babu Tripal, the very first Kadiska warrior rabbit. And as Mongaza Kweli was talking to the rabbit, he realized that they had the same destiny and calling. Babu Tripa had been called to protect the Mujoti tree, the fruit, and the Almasi. The same calling that Wangaza Kweli had been given by the three oracles. Now the question is, what is this Almasi that I keep on talking about? Well, I will tell you. Almasi is the most powerful mineral and metal in the entire Zambezi Mara and in the five continents. It is reddish in color, and the way it works is very interesting. The Almasi connects to the inner emotions and thoughts of the user. The person is able to yield a very powerful weapon. And so, the oracles had a caveat, and the caveat was only one leader from each tribe will know access to the Almasi. For the black Nyewusu wolves, it was Mongaza Kweli. And for the rabbits, it was Babu Tripao. And those were the only two people who knew the axis. And so, the two species started living together in harmony. They would eat and feast together. And on every harvest season, just like Thanksgiving, we'll have a huge feast called Virumba. And it was all dance and fun. Shambara, 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 Ikulu. And they lay down the entire table with all types of niceties, mandazis, chapatis, samosas. The wolves, they just enjoyed a nice piece of juicy meat. So they'll always ensure there was a little bit of a antelope, maybe zebra head, just for fun and giggles, maybe an alligator. And this went on for a long time. Decade after decade after decade after decade. And on the fourth decade, just like life will have it, Mwangaza Kweli passed on. And a few years later, Babu Tripa also died. And in their place came a new ruler for the Kadiska. And this man will change the entire course of things. All that peace and tranquility was about to die. In the land of Zambezi Mara, I have said this again, when there's peace and harmony, oh, that is when the god of vengeance and war, Koma, is ready to rain down terror on the Zambezi. And that new chief did exactly that. His name was Wivu. And Wivu was greedy, angry, and full of pride. And he wanted to immerse all the power to himself. And so he said, we the Kadiska, our rabbits that are smart and can talk and walk, why should we share the Almasi with those stinky, carnivorous Nyosi wolves? We must amass power. For power is not for the weak and kind. Power is for those with access, access to Almasi. So he plotted a plan, and the plan was to get rid of the black Yosi wolves. 
And so, on the harvest season of Virumba, Shambhala! Shambhala, Shambhala, Shambhala! Everybody was at Shambhala, Shambhala, Shambhala. This was going on. And the new students were enjoying themselves. And as they ate and made merry, the Katiska were eating, but not a lot. And towards the end of the night, as their feast was about to end, one by one by one, the Nyewusu walls fell on their stomachs, driving in pain. What was going on? And foam started to form on their mouths. What had happened? What a joyous moment was being ruined. The Nyewusu walls had been poisoned, and they'd been poisoned by the Kadiska. Here are the new civils getting poisoned and the Kadiska are walking scot-free. Now the question is, what will happen next? Will the new civils take vengeance if they're lucky? Or will they be left unto fate just to die and that will be the end of the lineage of Mwangaza Kweli? What happens next? What about the Kadiska? Are they feeling remorseful about this? What will happen to the Muchoti tree? What will happen to the Almasi? Who will protect it? Those are questions for the next episode. And until then, Shambara! Shambara! Shambara, 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 Shambara! I leave you in peace. May the peace that surrounds the great Zambezi Mara always follow you.